Welcome back to ABIT Academy, and if you're new, a very warm welcome to you. This channel is where you will find learning technical and IT skills is made fun and easy. This video is the first in our series covering all the topics of the ICDL Plus word processing syllabus. In this video, we'll be exploring working with documents. Let's not delay any further. Just hit the like and subscribe buttons and we'll get started. First things first, let's open Word. To do this, click on the Start button located on the bottom left of your screen. You'll recognise it by the Windows logo. Once you've clicked Start, scroll down through the Programs list and with a simple mouse click, select Word. And just like that, Word will automatically launch. But wait, there's more. If you have a document with a docx or doc extension, you can just double click on it and Word will automatically open it for you. If you aren't sure what I'm talking about with file extensions, just look for the Word logo as the icon for the file. This is especially useful if you have a lot of Word documents and you don't want to go through the process of opening Word and then searching for the document. Now, let's say you're done working on your document and you want to close it. You have two options. First, click on the symbol X located on the top right of the window. This is the traditional way of closing any program on a Windows computer. Option 2. Press simultaneously the Alt and F4 keys. This is a quick shortcut that will close the program for you. And the best part, this method works on for all other programs in the Office suite like Excel, PowerPoint as well. But what if you want to open a document that you've already created? It's easy. On the startup screen of Word, you'll see a list of your most recent open documents on the left column. This is a great way to quickly access the documents you've been working on recently without having to search for them. However, if the document you're looking for is not there, just click on open and you'll be able to access all your local files or online files for file hosting services like OneDrive, Google Drive or Dropbox. Once you've located your desired document, just click on it to open it. If the document has been deleted or is on a device that isn't connected to the computer, then the file will not open. If you're trying to open a document that is on an external hard drive or a USB drive, make sure that the drive is connected to your computer before you try and open the document. If, after opening a document, you want to open another document, just repeat the same procedure. You can have multiple Word documents open at the same time and easily switch between them by clicking on the Word icon on the taskbar and then click the document you want to bring to the foreground. To close the document, you have two options. The first option is to click on the File menu and then click on Close. This is a traditional way of closing a document. The second option is to press simultaneously the Ctrl and F4 keys as before. This is a quick shortcut and will close the document for you. When you close a document, a window will open in which you are asked if you desire to save the changes made. This means that since the last save, the file has been modified and the program wants to know whether it's necessary to update the file with the latest changes. In order to do this, just click on Save, otherwise don't save. By clicking on Cancel, the document will remain open, which of course means that Word will not close. It's always a good idea to save your work, but if you don't want to, just click on Don't Save. And that's it, you're done. Now we're going to take it a step further and show you how to create a new document. When you first open Word, you'll be presented with a startup screen that has a variety of options for creating a new document. One of these options is the Templates section. Templates are pre-made documents that have been created by programmers to meet the most common needs of users, like a curriculum or a report. Some templates are already stored on your computer, and others can be downloaded from the internet. If you want to create a new document based on the default template, which is just an empty page, you'll want to click on the first option, Blank Document. But what if you have specific needs, like writing a curriculum or a report? 
That's where the other templates come in handy. You can choose one of the templates that's already there, or you can use the search box to look for a specific template, like a memo, fax, or agenda. When you find a template that you're interested in, you can click on it to open a new window that gives you more details about the template. This window will also give you the option to create a new document based on that template by clicking on Create button. But what if you're not sure if that's the template you want to use? No problem. You can close the information window by clicking on the X in the top right of the window. Or you can see other templates information by clicking on the arrows on the side of the window. By well, now, you should be familiar with the template and know how to create a new document. You should also know how to search for templates that you're interested in, and also how to get more information about each template. When you're typing text in Word, it's being stored in the device's RAM, which is a type of memory that is completely deleted when the device is turned off. This means that if you don't save your document, all of your work will be lost once you shut down your computer. So, it's important to save your document regularly to avoid losing any of your work. Luckily, Word makes it easy to save your document. There are a few different ways to do it. The first way is to click on File and then Save. The second way is to click on the Save button, which is located at the bottom left of the window and is depicted as a floppy disk. And the third way is to use a keyboard shortcut by clicking simultaneously on the Control and S keys. By default, your document will be saved on a hosting file service OneDrive. If you're not connected to the internet, your document will be saved in a OneDrive folder on your device and will be synced to your online folder when you're back online. If the document you're working on is not new, the computer will automatically save it with the current name. But if the document is new, a window called Save As will open allowing you to save the file in the default folder or choose another one among the existing ones or create a new one. Even if you're opening an existing document, you can choose to save it with a new name by choosing Save As from the File menu. In both cases, the Save As window will allow you to choose the location where you want to save your document, whether it is a local memory unit or online. Inside the file name box, you can write the name that you desire for your file and then click on save, which is located at the bottom right of the window. In this window, you can also choose the folder in which you want to save your document or create a new one by clicking on new folder. It's also possible to open the save as window by pressing the F12 key. The latest version of Microsoft Office has a new feature that once you have saved a document for the first time and given it a location to save to and a file name, it will automatically save any changes you make to the document as you make them. Historically, we used to have to remember to regularly hit the save button to make sure if the computer crashed, we didn't lose too much work. This is now consigned to the history books and only need to select the save option if you are either saving the document for the first time or you want to save a copy to a different location and or a different name. Saving a document is an important step in the process of creating and editing documents in Word. It ensures your work is not lost and allows you to easily access it later on. As you may know, Word is not the only program for word processing. As well as different programs altogether, such as WordPad, Writer and Pages, there are also different versions of Word, such as Word 97, 2003, 2007. And because of this, it may be necessary to save a Word document in a different or older format. To save your document in a different format, you need to click on the File tab and choose Save As. After you've chosen the location where you want to save the file, the Save As window will open. From the Save As window, you'll see an arrow located at the end of the field. Click on the arrow to see a choice between other formats related to previous versions of Word, such as Word 97 to 2003 document. 
rich text format, web page, plain text, PDF, etc. Once you've chosen the format in which you want to save your document, just click the Save button. It is important to note that most recent versions of a program will generally open the previous version's files, but not the other way around. So if you need to transfer a file to a computer with an older version of Word, you'll need to choose the Word 97 2003 document format. Keep in mind that during the conversion to a previous version, you may lose some functions and effects used in your document. Let's go over some of the main formats and their features. DOCX format, introduced with Word 2007 and used also in the next version, and doc, belonging to previous word versions, allows to maintain text formatting, for example, font colors, images, graphics, etc. RTF format is often used as an interchange format between different programs of word processing and different versions of the same program. RTF stands for rich text format. PDF format offers a graphics and layout similar to a magazine and has a good compatibility with different operating systems. It is created by Adobe and is often free if used with Adobe Reader. PDF stands for Portable Document Format. .x and .dot and .m formats are used with Word and enable you to save a document you are working on as a template for other documents. HTM and HTML formats are used for internet pages. Saving your document in different formats is a great way to ensure that your work can be accessed and used on different devices and by different programs. Don't forget, saving your document in a different format can be helpful in many situations, such as when you need to share your work with people who may not have the same version of Word or when you want to share your document online. It's important to be familiar with the different formats and their features so that you can choose the best one for your needs. Let's move on and talk about working on multiple documents. As you can imagine, when working on multiple documents, you'll need to open them first. And we've already covered how to open a document in our first video in the series, but let's review it quickly. You can either go to the File tab and choose Open, or you can use the Open button located at the bottom left of the window, which is depicted as a folder. Now, once you have multiple documents open, you'll be able to see a preview of the documents that are open, but not currently visible in the taskbar. Just put your cursor on the Word icon and a list of open documents will appear. To select one of the open documents, simply click on it once. Another way to switch between the open documents is to hold down the Alt key and then press the Tab key which is generally represented by two arrows pointing in both directions. This will open a new window containing a series of icons which represent various open programs and documents. To move from one to another, hold down the Alt key and press the Tab key as many times as necessary to take you to the desired window and then release the keys. An updated version of this technique is to use the Windows key instead of Control. The Windows key is the one with the Windows logo on it, normally close to or next to the Control key you used last time. Now, just repeat, hold down the Windows key and hit Tab to cycle through the applications that are open on your computer. Just a quick reminder, during the exam it is not possible to use key combinations, but now that you know how to work on multiple documents and switch between them easily. In this lesson, we started by explaining how to open and close the Microsoft Word application. These techniques can be used on nearly every Windows-based program. Then we discussed saving documents, including when you would use Save as opposed to Save As. Talking of Save As, we then discussed using this option to save documents in a different format, either in an older format, so older versions of Word, can work with the document or an entirely different format such as PDF which is useful for sharing documents you would rather the recipient didn't change or edit. That's a wrap for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Remember practice makes perfect. 
so go ahead and try out the techniques we covered today. Don't forget we've got plenty more videos to come covering all aspects of the ICDL Plus word processing, from basic formatting to advanced techniques. We'll make sure you master the program like a pro. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video.